My art has always, since I started, been an expression of myself and the world around me. I call it a visual voice for those stories that are silenced, untold or forgotten. You know the ones, the ones that events happen in our life but nobody wants us to talk about? They're too taboo. We can't talk about all those topics. It's just not right. It's not proper. And the problem that I find is when we don't talk about them, when these experiences in life, these events in life are silenced, we can't learn from them. We can't heed warnings from them. And shared experiences, we all know, create healing. So healing is prevented when there's silence. So I just took it upon myself to break that silence. And the only way I knew how was to give something a visual voice. That voice to tell that story in a visual way. You've heard it said many times before that a picture can paint a thousand words, and it's true. I dealt with subjects that I'd lived through, experience that I lived through that I wanted to talk to people about, but nobody wanted to talk about them because, yet again, they were taboo. We don't talk about that kind of thing in a nice British family. <laughs> adoption. Adoption was a major part of my life. I was a birth mother at the age of 18. But nobody talks of adoption, and when they do, they talk of it in this lovely, oh, isn't that nice? You adopted a child. And it is nice, and it's very important, and it's very precious. But there's two sides to everything. What happened to the birth one? When I created this sculpture, I exhibited it at a parent finder meeting, somewhere that completely understood about adoption. But one gentleman came up to me and he said, wow, birth mothers have feelings? <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> but it was important. Again, it opened a door to dialogue. It opened up an opportunity for him to understand. He's been in touch with me ever since, and he's been out and found his mum. And he has a relationship with both parents now, which is a wonderful gift. However, I think sometimes a message can be put out there in a smaller size. This is one that fits in the palm of the hand, you'll see by the size of the watches. She talks about abuse, and how any event in our life, another topic that nobody wants to talk about, needs to be out there, it needs to be discussed, so that we can share experiences, we can learn and heed warnings, and we can start to heal. She talks about time that doesn't really speed up or slow down, but it's never quite the same after any traumatic event. It changes, and it doesn't go back to how it was. People often ask me, why do you do such depressing art? But to me, it isn't depressing. It's just given a voice to something that hasn't been able to be spoken before. And the value for me is to see what comes from it, how it can be a teaching tool. I had one mum with three daughters who, until she saw this, wouldn't even believe that something like this could happen to a child. So she wasn't even willing to learn about it, to understand or to look for warning signs. So just this one tiny sculpture can change the opinion of one mother, and that's, that's work enough for me. All these topics, as well as many, many others that I've started to deal with and will deal with in the future, if we don't deal with these, if we don't open a dialogue, if the YWCA doesn't put out support there for the young women in this world and all of us, if we don't put those messages and support groups out there, then from the outside, we look just fine. I look out at you and you look out at me and we don't understand what's happened in our life. And that outward appearance is sometimes deceiving because inside, we ourselves may be shattered. That core thing that is us may be hurting and may be damaged. And that's why it's important for me to spread a message.